speakers and I would come to the park and say, I want to do this, I need to do this. Um, before that, back in grade school, so as crazy as this sounds, especially to this group, I was actually scared of roller coasters that go upside down. So I would come up with friends, I would ride the racer, I would ride the beast. But the vortex, I just, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And so finally I came up one day with some buddies and they got in line for the vortex and I thought, you know, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. I kept telling myself, millions of people ride these rides, I can do this. So I got on it, I went around the ride, came back in the station, and as soon as the train pulled back in the station, I thought, I have to do this. I have to build and design roller coasters. I don't know who does this, I don't know whose job this is, or if it even is a job, but I have to do this. And so fast forward to where I am today, it's amazing to be one of the first people to ever ride a ride like Mystic Timbers, um, and be one of the first of billions to ride a ride. So it's it's amazing to come full circle and it's amazing to be here today to talk to you guys. So the biggest thing uh, that I was involved with with Mystic Timbers was sort of that initial ride layout. Um, obviously with a ride like Mystic Timbers, it's a huge project. And so there's not one single person that's involved. Um, there are multiple people that are sort of involved with what goes into this. And whether that's the site walks I did with my colleagues and some of the folks here at the park, and actually looking and saying, you know what, it'd be really cool if we could put a cool twist here, or while you're riding Whitewater Canyon, if the train was you know, going right over top of you. So to kind of put all of those things in motion and to sit and put pen to paper and actually design a ride like Mystic Timbers, like I said, even once you get into designing the bends and designing the trains and designing the mechanical systems, there's a team of engineers that I work with uh, that are really passionate about what they do. And these people love to ride rides just as much as you guys do. And they come out here and we're riding rides during our off, off days, off seasons. Um, and we just love doing it. And so, you know, that's what's great about, you know, great coasters and being involved in a ride like Mystic Timbers is it's, it's been a team of people that just love doing this type of thing. And they love to kind of every day be out there and, and know exactly um, what, what to put in a ride and what to ride, make a ride fun. Um, so, yeah, again, being here today and being a part of all this is great. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of you guys out there today that want to do this. And I know I've had a few questions I've taken today. Uh, about how you do this, you know, how do you design roller coasters? And there are a handful of companies out there worldwide that do this. Uh, the biggest thing I would encourage you to do is while you're in grade school and high school, yes, come out to events like this, you know, to be around people that are like-minded and can tell you, you know what, I rode this ride. This is a cool element. We should go ride this. We should, we should put this element on a ride. You know, come out to things like this. You guys are the biggest demographic that we want to please. You know, we want to make you guys happy. Um, and that's the biggest thing. So when you're in grade school and high school, come out to events like this and talk to people and, and see what people like to do. You know, as you go through high school, I would encourage you guys to study engineering and study sciences. Uh, physics is a huge part of what we do. You know, learning how to do that, uh, work with spreadsheets, work with drawings like AutoCAD, play with No Limits. You know, No Limits is a great program that we even use every day to design rides. We might not design the rides in No Limits, but once the ride's designed, we can actually import that into No Limits to show parks what the ride's gonna be like. Um, so do those things through high school, and then once you're ready to go to college, I would encourage you guys to study engineering, and whether that's civil engineering or mechanical engineering, those are the big keys of what we use. So a lot of my colleagues are either mechanical or civil. I'm mechanical myself, so I would encourage you guys, those are the things you wanna do. And lastly, once you're actually in school, to actually go on internships. So companies like Great Coasters, like Chance Rides, like Premier Rides, all of these companies actually offer internships. And they might not be forefront, they might not say we offer internships, but if you dig enough and you start to come out to events like this and meet people like me and meet people that design rides, you know, we're gonna remember your face. And once you guys come around full circle and say, we want an internship, how do we do this? You say, oh yeah, I remember seeing you guys at Coaster Stock. Would you like to come on the team and intern with us? And so you just never know where those paths are going to come. You never know where the, the world's going to take you. Um, but again, I thank you guys for coming out to Coaster Stock today. I thank Don and the team at Kings Island uh, for having me up here. And again, this has been a dream come true to work on a ride like Mystic Timbers. Um, with that being said, I would like to take a few questions if anybody has any. I know I have a, a few minutes for them. Uh, Don's going to walk around with the mic as we uh, call some folks out and uh, we'll take those questions. When are you going to build a ride at Cedar Point? <laughs> you know, that's that's the other pipe dream. Obviously, I'm from Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky area. I've come here my whole life. Um, so being at Kings Island, being able to come back here and build a ride like Mystic Timbers has been amazing. It's truly a dream come true, you guys. I can't say that enough. 
Uh, but another dream come true, of course, would be the roller coaster capital of the world, and you just never know when uh, what coaster's going to head up that way. Yeah, so the last project that we just built at Great Coasters was the Wicker Man at Alton Towers. If you guys haven't seen this online, go online and check it out. They built a 60-foot tall Wicker Man structure that the roller coaster actually goes through three different times. And every time the ride goes through the structure, it actually shoots big balls of flames um, outside the top of this thing's shoulder. It's amazing. Uh, I truly encourage you guys to check that out. But yes, that was I was involved in that project as well. So at Great Coasters, we specialize in wood coasters, and that's sort of how Great Coasters got started. Uh, we saw a lot of the rides that were built back in the 80s and 90s, and even uh, a lot of the general public folks that are uh, friends with asking, well, why do you guys build wood coasters? They're all rough. Uh, obviously, if you've ever been a, uh, ridden a Great Coasters ride or ridden a ride that's well-maintained, like all the rides here at Kings Island, you know that wood coasters can be fun. They can be relatively smooth. Um, so unfortunately for wood coasters, for Great Coasters, uh, we're just going to continue to build wood roller coasters. Uh, but there's certainly some companies out there that are good at making steel coasters as well. That's fair. That's all I see. What year did you start making roller coasters? That's a good question. So, uh, I actually graduated college in December of 2008. So in 2009, I got started with Great Coasters International, actually building the trains for Prowler in Kansas City, Missouri. And obviously, yeah, I like to hear that. All right, Adam, we have a question from the back. Yeah. Uh, you can raise your hand back there just so you can see what you're talking about. Okay, his question is, uh, when would you hire or would you hire test writers uh, in this situation? Uh, as a lineman, he said he has to write rides by feel. So he wants to know. Okay, here he is. Hi, I'm visually impaired in our ride. I mean, I can see what's immediately ahead of me. But a majority of my writing is my feel. Do you ever do any companies ever hire people to actually ride and test? Okay, feels good today. Let's do it. All right, feels a little rough today. What can we do to smooth it out? That kind of thing. Does anybody ever hire people to do that? Uh, so that's a, that's a really interesting concept, and that's obviously you know of the reasons I wanted to build roller coasters was one to ride roller coasters, right? Uh, so one of the biggest things that we've done, and that's kind of what makes you know wood coasters certainly special, is a lot of the guys that are on our staff know what a wood coaster should feel like, and you know you've said it best. Obviously, all you guys are here today to enjoy rides like Mystic Timbers and the Beast and so on, and they're all fun, and it's great to you know feel like you're out of control and ride a ride. But obviously, those first rides that we do, we're feeling to make sure that Mystic Timbers is going to be smooth, that it's going to be fun, that it's going to hold up over time. And those are the big things that we want to be sure that the ride's going to continue. I don't think we've ever hired anybody just to do that, but it's not to say it couldn't happen. Uh, 
Um, I certainly don't see us ever GCIing with the Beast. Thank you. So one of the one of the challenges that we face, so with Great Coasters, we obviously fix rides and build new rides. So the one thing we did at Ghost Rider by keeping it a wood coaster, uh, that was certainly a challenge, and I would encourage anybody to go out and ride that ride. And there's there's a big reason for that. First of all, it, it was a challenge for us because we certainly faced multiple things for a ride that already existed. And number two is I would and again I would encourage everyone to ride Ghost Rider. Because this ride takes the best CCI elements, the best GCI elements, and mingles them together and does things that no other wood coasters do out there today. So I would say Ghost Rider was certainly a challenge for us. Uh, Sunk Beast is a big ride. I mean, that was that was a, certainly a, a big ride here at the park, and that was uh, that was it's certainly a challenge. It's not here anymore for a reason. Um, I mean, obviously there are things that would have changed on the ride, uh, but it was certainly an icon in its own right. How many projects have you been involved with, and which one is your all-time favorite? So there's certainly quite a few projects I've been involved with, and whether that's just building the trains or actually coming up with concepts for new rides or doing ride center lines like a ghost ride. Um, Again, my first ride was Prowler. My, one of my last rides was Mystic Timbers, obviously. Uh, we just did all the Tower, so I was involved in that. Um, you know, each, each ride is unique and special. Certainly Mystic Timbers, it's hard for me to say something different than this ride. Being here from Cincinnati, you know, riding rides like the Beast and the Racer when I was a kid, the Vortex making me want to do this career. So, obviously Mystic Timbers is near and dear to my heart. I asked you two questions. Sure, so the, the whole shed concept was actually something the park created with the name of the ride. So they've kind of worked while we were actually doing the design of the ride itself. They were actually taking the parts of the ride that they knew were going to be the shed and creating that whole element for the shed. So as far as the elements of the shed that changed, there wasn't very many. As far as the actual ride itself, so we actually went through a few iterations of the ride. But if I showed you some of the first concepts of Mystic Timbers and what you see today, they're very, very similar. And my other question is, Again, Summit Beast isn't around for a reason. Uh, sometimes the tallest and fastest isn't the best. Uh, with Great Coasters, we've always had the design philosophy of a ride that's between 120 and 150 feet is sort of the maximum. Obviously, when you put more energy into a, a wood coaster, it's always a little bit difficult because that wood has to breathe, right? The ride you're going to have on Mystic Timber is when it's hot and sunny versus cold and rain, you're going to be completely different because that wood changes. So, uh, yeah, Summit Beast is, is certainly a special one. So I've been involved in several rides, so anything that Great Coasters has done since from 2009 up till today, I've been sort of involved in. Uh, but again, whether that's the trains or design of mechanical components, design of vents, helping with center lines, designing rides center lines, um, it's hard to say. We've certainly built a lot more rides over the past several years, and there's a lot of rides we've built in China and things, so it's been a lot. <laughs> um, are you going to make any roller coasters that you Yeah, so that's a really good question. So with a wood coaster like Mystic Timbers, when you look at it, it looks like it's a big thing of wood. So we'll, a ride like Mystic Timbers, we actually have to make that wood stronger because of the forces you experience. So there's actually a lot of steel on Mystic Timbers. Uh, when it crosses over the Whitewater Canyon Ravine, there's a lot of steel there. There's actually steel rails that actually run on top of the wood track. So we do use a little bit of steel inside the ride itself, but we certainly wouldn't put steel track on top of the wood coaster. Hey. Well, that's not a bad thing, though. In the past, a lot of the great designers were themselves influenced by other great designers. Who would you say are your greatest influences? Uh, so that's a that's a great question. Obviously, growing up and seeing rides from like John Miller and John Allen, like those rides are truly icons. Um, but working hand in hand with guys like Jeff Pike, uh, modern guys of today, or even Al Shilke, I haven't worked with Alan, but some of the work that he's done is really amazing. But to see these guys and to have talked with these guys and kind of get inspiration from these guys is really really incredible. So. Why did you want to help build Mystic Timbers in the Albert Uh So with Mystic Timbers being involved in a ride like this, obviously
obviously I wanted to, to build wooden roller coasters. I mean, wooden roller coasters are sort of icons to parks. Uh, you know, it's certainly a big hats off to Kings Island for having the most wooden roller coaster track of any park in the entire world here at Kings Island. So I've actually worked at Great Coast since 2009, so yeah, almost 10 years doing this at this point. Have you ever worked with other companies? Um, so we do work with some other companies out there. Uh, some of them aren't necessarily big, obviously, roller coaster design companies, but they can be fabrication companies. Um, obviously, we work with Skyline Attractions now to do some of our ride center lines. Um, we have worked with other ride manufacturers out there as well, and sometimes that involves you know, new challenges that we deal with, new elements that we work on, um, but we do deal with other roller coaster manufacturers out there occasionally. That's a good question. And I think that's all the time that I have, guys. So thank you very much for coming out. Thanks for your questions. It was a great talk to you guys.